couple of years ago, I made this simple little sled to straight line rip and taper material using a table saw. The design is super simple. A single fence on a single pivot point with a couple of toggle clamps as hold downs. Just tighten the fence into position and close the toggles. The opposing forces keep the material held down just tight enough to make it work. Now, the only issue I have with this sled is that it isn't quite big enough for some of the projects that I have going on right now. So I made a new one, and so far, I really like it. Not only does it straight line rip regular three quarter inch stock like my old sled would, it also accommodates thicker stock, opening up some interesting possibilities that I didn't have before. It also has two adjustable fences that can pivot to almost any angle and be locked down for material placeholding, meaning repeated cuts become quick, easy, and, well, repeatable. I made it out of a piece of melamine shelving, and I'm going to use Micro Jig's MatchFit dovetail clamps for the hold downs, both of which I'll touch more on as we go. Using the dovetail clamps means routing dovetails, so I start by laying out center lines of where I want those dovetail grooves to land. I opted for a couple of grooves two inches apart, starting at the bottom leftmost corner, and then spreading out to 12 inches apart from there. Okay, so here's the thing. I've seen these types of sleds made before, and there's one key component that gets overlooked every single time. The head portion of the clamp is directly over the foot portion of the clamp, naturally. But that means that if you were to slide it all the way forward, like to clamp down a narrow piece of stock, the foot of the clamp will be sticking out of the sled and you will run into it with the saw blade. That's a bad thing. So instead, what we want is some sort of stop ahead of the clamps that prevents them from going too far forward. To accomplish this, I set up to plunge half inch holes about a half inch away from the edge and three eighths of an inch deep to start each one of my left to right dovetails. This does two things. It gives me an entry point for my dovetail bit, since dovetail bits aren't very good at plunging, and it leaves a small amount of material in front of the clamps so that they physically will not be able to slide forward and into the blade's path. To cut the dovetail slots, I'm using this dovetail bit from Microjig. A regular half inch, 14 degree dovetail bit will work as well, but the Microjig bit is shaped a little bit different and it rounds the hard corners off in the bottom of the dovetail and on the top, which means less sanding and refining of the dovetail groove on my part. I used the holes that I had previously drilled to set my plunge depth and use a shop made T-square to start routing the left to right grooves in the sled, starting at the relief holes and then moving forward. One thing that can make a big difference in the quality of the cut is to make a cleanup pass simply by running the router backwards through the cut you already made. This will sever the fibers that didn't cut cleanly the first go around. The next step is to route the intersecting dovetails. I used an edge guide on the router for this, which really is kind of ideal for these types of cuts. But if you don't have an edge guide, just clamp down a straight piece of plywood or something to act as a fence, similar to the shop made T-squared I used before. Now in hindsight, I should have placed the first groove a little farther away from the front edge because it leaves this little piece in the front. It's a little weak, especially when using particle board as the medium. I'm not really sure why I did this to be absolutely honest with you. So if you make something similar, just make sure to start this first cut a little farther forward. With all my dovetail grooves cut, I could mill up the fences. I cut some scrap half inch plywood to about an inch and a quarter wide and 16 inches long. Then I marked out where I wanted start and stop points for the slots I would need to route for the hardware. This would be basically a 14 inch long groove for the long fence and an eight inch long groove for the short fence. I set the router table fence to half the width of the plywood pieces and using a quarter inch spiral bit and a flip stop as a guide, I lowered the piece down onto the bit until it cut all the way through and then routed my grooves. Now I know this is a technique that not everyone is comfortable with, so if this method really just isn't your cup of tea, go with what you know. After a little sanding of the fences, I used a small paintbrush to apply some paste wax to the dovetail grooves. The paste wax will let the hardware glide smoothly in the grooves and can actually prolong the life of a sled a little bit because the hardware won't get bound up as much, causing unnecessary stress to the grooves. It's a tedious step, but one you won't regret once you do it. So for the maiden voyage and really the piece that prompted me to make this sled, I straight ripped this roughly 17 inch wide panel glue up. I simply set the material on the sled, secured it in place with a couple of match fit dovetail clamps and ran it through the saw. 
And for those wondering what the weird auxiliary fence looking thing is that's attached to my saw fence, this is something I talked about in a video not long ago. It's just a simple auxiliary fence that not only extends my stock fence front and rear, but also provides some infeed support for longer, heavier, or more awkward rips at the table saw. And it works really well. It definitely isn't something that's required for this sled or any other operation really, but it does make life a little bit easier. Before testing out the fences, I decided to rip the sled down to about 14 inches wide. This shaves off a little unnecessary weight, but still gives me quite a bit of material support for wider pieces. And the MatchFit hardware is pretty self-explanatory. Insert the dovetail hardware into the tracks, put a fence over the hardware via the quarter inch slot we made earlier, and then add the knobs. Now I can set my fences to accommodate almost any taper or odd cut and have positive stops in both directions for repeatability's sake. For one cut at different times with different size pieces, this isn't too exciting or even necessary. But if I wanted to make multiple pieces come out exactly the same, the fences are an absolute must. One added bonus in regard to batching out multiple pieces, uh, Microjig makes these green handled clamps that retain the height that you set them at. They're a little pricier than the yellow ones, but they're super handy because the arm stays in the position that you put it in, so you can very quickly take material out of the clamps and put new material in. And two things I almost forgot to mention. The long dovetail grooves are not just for the bottom fence. They can be used for clamping as well if I find myself in an awkward clamping situation. And the fences are cut to an inch and a quarter wide so that there's enough room to still use a clamp where the fence might otherwise get in the way if it was wider. Now let's address the elephant in the room and that's the decision to use particle board shelving. So I chose to use this shelving for its cost effectiveness. It is kind of heavy and there is a little bit of worry that the particle board may not hold up over time. But one of the benefits of me doing what I do here is that I get to experiment with these types of things and see what works and what doesn't. Also, because I know someone will bring it up, I didn't use a miter bar or a runner on the underside of this sled because I didn't want it to be stuck at only one width at the saw. And a miter bar would lock me into that one fixed position. In the event that I have material that is wider than the sled, like my panel glue up in my example, I can simply move the fence over to accommodate the extra width. 